Owen, we're live. Checking live stream. Stream is good. Stream is good. Sergeant, can we start our recordings? Cloud is good. Sergeant Hope. Back up is rolling. Yes. Good morning and welcome to today's New York City Council Remote Hearing on the Committee on Environmental Protection. At this time, with all panelists, please turn on your videos. Thank you. To minimize disruption, please place all the electronic uh, uh, to vibrate or silent mode. Thank you. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at testimony at council.nyc. The GOV. I repeat, testimony at council.nyc. The GOV. Chair, we are ready to begin. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, this hearing is now is now commenced. Um, good morning. I am Jim Gennaro, chair of the Committee on Environmental Protection. I coming through, okay, Sergeant? Mm. Yes, coming sir. Through okay. Okay. Great. Um, and today we'll be hearing six bills that aim to reduce unnecessary building illumination, uh, speak to noise inspections, and uh, increase brownfield program enforcement. The lighting bills uh, being proposed will not only help the city reduce its energy usage and emissions, it will also make the urban environment significantly safer for migratory birds that transit through New York every year. I know we have people that are going to be coming and you know testifying about that. I appreciate that. Um, according to the Audubon Society, New York City is located at a point of concentration on the Atlantic Flyway bird migration route, which uh, which stretches from the Canadian Arctic uh, to the southern tip of South America. Twice a year, migratory birds fly along this path northward from wintering grounds to breeding grounds in spring, and south toward warmer climates. Fall. Nearly 400 distinct species are known to traverse the Atlantic Flyway during their seasonal migrations, including 11 species listed as critically endangered uh, or just endangered or vulnerable by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. The city's more than 500 miles of coastline and wide variety of habitat um, do attract many migratory species to the area for resting and you know, nourishment along their journeys, <clears throat> leading to Jamaica Bay, which is designated as a high priority, global important bird area by BirdLife International and by the Audubon Society. All of the illumination bills were introduced at the request of the Queens Borough President back when he was a council member, now he's Borough President, but this is where the bills um, had their genesis. They being uh, you know, carried by other members, and we certainly do appreciate that. We also uh, will also hear will also hear legislation intended to enforce the city brownfield cleanup program, which was launched in 2010 under the jurisdiction of the mayor's office of environmental remediation or OER, but uh, lacked enforcement provisions being proposed today. It was I who created the first municipal brownfield program in the country in partnership with OER, and the program has been a great success. I was happy to introduce this bill to give OER the needed enforcement tools to make our Brownfields program uh, you know, um, even more successful. Just by way of background, um, when I was chair last time, uh, I looked into the Brownfields issue. Um, you know, most of the Brownfield sites in New York City do not qualify for the uh, for the state Brownfields program. Mm -hmm. And so it was necessary for the city to create its own municipal based Brownfields program. It's very difficult to do because the city does not you know, possess the you know, requisite authority to give, uh, you know, 
developers of um, um, contaminated properties, the appropriate you know, liability release. We don't have that power. Um, but we passed this bill, we work with the state to have them cede us that power uh, and they're deeply engaged with us. And it's been a great success. Um, you know, over 700 sites uh, since 2010 when the program started um, are completely done. There are 350 in the pipeline now. We have 100 new sites entering the program, 100 new sites being finished every year. This has been a you know terrific success, um, and we're going to make it better uh, with this bill that will give OER the needed enforcement tools to make sure that um, you know people follow the uh, the, 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 the you know, program to the letter. This is when we will hear, uh, you know, more about that, but I'm, you know, very attached to that and anything we, and, and, you know, to this day, we are still the only, um, municipal brownfields program in the country. The city should rightly be proud of that. Let me just walk through the, uh, bills a little bit. Um, um, intro 265 would prohibit the nighttime illumination of the exterior interior of certain classes of buildings except when building owners have uh, demonstrated a need for night security lighting, when buildings are occupied by individuals, and when nighttime illumination is required by law, rule, or zoning resolution. The bill would permit landmark buildings to apply to the Landmarks Preservation Committee for relief from its requirements if such building is a significant part of the city's skyline. The local law would also prohibit the illumination of seasonal lighting and lighted um, storefront displays after midnight. We have to put Santa Claus to bed at midnight. Can't be have his lights on after midnight. Um, um, that was a little levity, Santa Claus, you know, something, nothing. Okay, all right, okay. It's the holiday season. I see Andrew Farnsworth smiling. I appreciate that, Andrew, thank you. Um, um, where are we? Uh, this local law would take effect 120 days after enactment, except that the relevant agency shall undertake the promulgation of rules prior to such day. Um, um, intro 271 would reduce unnecessary illumination in city-owned and city-controlled spaces by creating a phased timeline stipulating that 50% of city-owned and city-controlled buildings comply with occupancy sensor installation requirements by 2020, 80% by 2025, and 100% by 2030. The legislation would also require the Department of Citywide Administrative Services to submit an annual report to the mayor and the speaker of the city council outlining changes in the number of covered buildings, percentage of, of uh, compliant buildings, and the number of buildings that, become, that became compliant in the previous calendar year. The local law will take effect uh, immediately. My own anecdotal comment on this is like, why the city needs a phase in when they have total control over all these buildings are beyond me, but I'm just a chair. What do I know? Uh, um, intro 274 would mandate that city owned buildings turn off non essential outdoor lightings between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. during peak avian migration periods from April 15th to May 31st, from August 15th through November 15th of each year. This local law would take effect immediately. That means the city gets no phase in. Good, it shouldn't phase in. It's the damn city for crying out loud. They should be able to turn their lights on and off without a phase in. Again, I repeat that. Um, um, intro 2180 in relation to the results of noise inspections would mandate that DEP publish the results of their noise inspections online within 24 hours after they've been completed. This is something that DEP already does, but we're just kind of moving up the timeline on. Uh, um, intro 2190 in relation to providing noise inspection reports would require DEP and the NYPD to give a copy of the noise inspection report created after a 311 noise complaint to anyone who requires the report, uh, anyone who requests the report and provides the 311 tracking number. The person requesting the noise inspection report would not have to submit a freedom of information law request to receive the report. Uh, intro 2460, which I talked about earlier, would grant New York City Mayor's Office of Environment or Environmental Remediation the authority to issue civil penalties against any person, persons or entities that violate the, the provisions of a site management plan for a local brownfield site or the rules of the Office of, of Environmental 
remediation. That's the office, of course, that runs the Brownfields program. This legislation would also grant the director of the Office of Environmental Remediation the power to designate other city agencies to issue administrative summonses and notices of violation and authorize uh, designees of the, uh, of the office to enter private property and conduct inspections. We really need people to comply with the Brownfields program and you know OER, uh, you know, to the you know greatest you know degree possible, and that's what this bill is about. I'd like to thank the really terrific uh, staff of the committee who have done such great work over the years. Um, the Council of the Committee, Samara Swanson, Policy Analyst Nadia Johnson, Ricky Chawla, and Financial Analyst uh, Jonathan Seltzer. And finally, least but not last, my really terrific Legislative Director and Council, Navi Kaur, for all of their hard work. And it is now is the time for me to go to my little uh text message about uh, uh, uh council members who are here uh i'm told by this message that um, um council member Dharma diaz um, a member of the committee council member menchaca also a member um, of the committee um are are with us and uh um council member rosenthal who is one of the sponsors of uh, one of the bills here today uh, uh, I am um, uh, uh, making acknowledgement of, uh, of Councilman Rosenthal, and, and if there are any more council members in attendance, uh, Nadia, if you can just send me a text, that would be great. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> now, the the moderator of the uh, council of, of the hearing is whom certainly I want to recognize, uh, you know, Helen for a statement. I see that she has her hands up. Your hand up. She wants to talk about her bill. <clears throat> uh, uh, um, who's moderating the hearing today? That would be me, Council Member. Um, um, and it, um, if if you'd like, Chair Gennaro, I believe uh, Council Member Rosenthal can then proceed with her statement after yours, and then we can move on to swearing. Sure, in. sure. Uh, 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 thank you, um, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, it, is with, it is with great pleasure that I recognize Council Member Rosenthal for her statement on her good bill. Thank you for being thank, here, Helen. Thank you so much, Chair Gennaro. Really appreciate that and appreciate your enthusiasm about all things uh, environmental. So good morning, I'm Councilmember Helen Rosenthal. My pronouns are she and her. I want to begin by thanking Chair Gennaro for holding this hearing and including my bill, Intro 24274, which will require all city-owned buildings to turn off their outdoor lights, non-essential outdoor lights from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. during peak avian migratory periods. Every year as birds migrate over large cities, they become disoriented by bright artificial lights and often collide with buildings and windows resulting in injury and death. In September of this year, we saw hundreds of beautiful yellow songbirds crash into New York City skyscrapers and fall dead or injured on the sidewalks. According to the New York City Audubon Society, between 90,000 and 230,000 migrating birds die from collisions with glass in New York City each year. Indeed, just next door to my office, my district office here on the Upper West Side, the Wild Bird Fund nurses hundreds of injured migratory birds who are brought in by concerned New Yorkers. They often knock on my door with a very wor worried look and a box, and I know to send them right next door. The volume of birds traveling across North America is truly extraordinary. We can help support the incredible ecological diversity found in our skies. I'm proud that through my bill, the city of New York will take the first step and be required to turn off outdoor lights in its thousands of properties from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. during peak migration periods. My legislation complements Council Member Brannon's bill which would prohibit nighttime illumination of the exterior or interior of certain types of commercial buildings. I support his bill and strongly encourage the private sector 
to follow suit. We should also consider other simple yet invaluable interventions. These include special tints for building windows so they're more visible to birds and also helping to prevent deadly collisions. I welcome your feedback on this short but important bill. We encourage everyone to submit their testimony, including those who testify today or those who are unable to join us today. Please send your written testimony to testimony at council.nyc.gov and to my office. Thank you again, and I'll pass it back to Chair Gennaro. Uh, thank you very much, Councilmember Rosenthal. This is a you know wonderful suite of bills, and I certainly thank you for your strong advocacy on uh, behalf of not only uh, you know bird wildlife, but all wildlife and all things environmental. Um, and uh, you know the next council is certainly going to uh, you know, deeply miss your leadership in this. Uh, Thank you. And, uh, and actually, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention um, gratitude to Speaker Johnson, who I know is an amazing um, advocate for birds and the Wild Bird Fund. Um, his leadership here has been extraordinary, and we need to acknowledge that. Sorry about that interruption, Chair Gennaro. But no, I, 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 no, that was, uh, 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 you know, we would be um, remiss if we didn't say that. And thank you for saying it. <clears throat> I, I might have you know, forgotten to say that. Shame on me. But I, no. I wish to be associated with your remarks regarding Speaker Johnson. And just for, and you, you, you mentioned, um, <clears throat> you know, the other bills that are are being. Um, uh, the the, the, uh, uh, the prime sponsors um, uh, being um, uh, Councilman Brandon. That will be just for the sake of the record. Um, uh, Councilman Brandon is the prime sponsor of Intro Two Six Five and Two Seven One. <clears throat> you, of course, uh, uh, Helen, are the are the uh, prime sponsor of Two Seven Four and the uh, noise bills. Uh, 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 you know, 2180 is uh, 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 Keith Powers, as is 2190 and 2460, the Brownfields bill. That would be, uh, you know, that would be neat. So I think that kind of, uh, you know, rounds out the record. Uh, and with that, and having not received another text saying that there's any other uh, council members to recognize, uh, you know, Mr. Moderator, I think we're you know, ready for the first uh, witness from the administration. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for joining our virtual hearing. I'm Council Chris Sartori, and I'll be moderating today's hearing. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that you'll be on mute to, until you are called on to testify, at which point you will be unmuted by the host. I will be calling on panelists to testify, so please listen to your names as I will be calling on periodic folks to, um, to speak after the uh, current people. Please be aware that there could be a delay in muting and unmuting, so please be patient. And again, please listen for your name to be called. We'll begin with testimony from the administration, which will be followed by testimony from members of the public. During the hearing, if council members would like to ask a question, please use the Zoom raise hand function and I'll call on you in order. We'll be limiting council member questions to five minutes, including responses. At this point, I will now deliver the oath of, uh, of affirmation to the administration representatives. And I will call on each of you individually to record your answers to be followed by your testimony. So at this point, please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? Uh, Director McIntyre. I do. Thank you. And at this point, I will invite Mark McIntyre, Director and General Counsel of the Mayor's Office of Environmental Remediation to begin his uh, statement. Thank you. Um, good morning, Chairman Gennaro, members of the committee and uh, Council Member Rosenthal. Um, my name is Mark McIntyre. I'm the Director and General Counsel of the Mayor's Office of Environmental Remediation. OER was established in 2009 its statutory authority is set forth in the city charter at section 15 uh, E and 57 1404, as well as in chapter nine of title 24 of the administrative code. 
we operate the city's land cleanup program <clears throat> that promotes cleanup and redevelopment of vacant and contaminated land in New York City. Parenthetically, I'd like to note that Chairman Gennaro was instrumental in shepherding the bill that created this office and the city's land cleanup program through the council in 2009. Under OER oversight, landowners and developers implement remedial actions that clean up land prior to the construction of new buildings. Our land cleanup program generally works very well. And over the past decade, has been responsible for overseeing the cleanup of more than 400 acres of New York City property. In operating our program, however, we have identified two areas where owners and developers sometimes violate program requirements. This bill would address both of them by establishing clear enforcement mechanisms that we can pursue. First is with respect to the OER site management plan. This is the document that sets forth the property owner's obligation to maintain physical and legal controls that limit exposure to residual contamination at a remediated site. Enforcement action is needed where owners violate a site management plan by failing to submit reports, certifying that long-term site controls continue to function as intended. Approximately 200 sites that have completed our program are required to inspect the long-term physical controls at their sites every year and certify their performance to OER. Owners of some of these sites fail to do so, and thus OER has no assurance that these site controls, ones that protect building occupants from residual contamination, are functioning as intended. Failure to comply with a site management plan could undermine a remedy and present a risk to public health and the environment. Thus, we need the remedy of bringing an enforcement action to bring these buildings into compliance. Second, enforcement is needed where developers participating in the city's land cleanup program ignore requirements and remediate sites without any OER oversight. Excluding OER from overseeing a site cleanup casts doubt on the completeness of the remedy and violates the central premise of a government land cleanup program. The proposed amendment would authorize OER to issue civil penalties against parties that violate site management plans or other OER program requirements to bring these properties into compliance and would ensure continued protection of public health and the environment. I'm happy to take questions from the, from the council members who are here. Uh, uh, thank you, Director Ma uh, uh, McIntyre. Mm -hmm. um, I, I well remember the, uh, you know, the days in 2009 when we worked together to uh, get this going along with Dan Walsh and other good folks mm -hmm. and the uh, folks at Plan YC and, um, you know, you, you, you've, um, you know, seen it through um, you know, to the point where we have now, as I said in my opening, uh, you know, many hundreds of sites that have gone through the program, 700 sites, 350 in the pipeline. <clears throat> and so um, this has gotten, uh, I, I think, maybe bigger than anyone thought it was going to, and that's really great. <clears throat> and I thank you for your service and and from the beginning um, until now. And um, with, just for the, I mean, of course, I know this pretty well, but uh, for the sake of uh, others who are watching in, uh, like the first part, you know, like the first remedy um, in this bill with regard to site controls, uh, you know, people should understand that, you know, once the site is fully remediated, um, there is sometimes have, has to be uh uh, a, 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 a you know technological you know device within the building that would continue to operate to perhaps you know outgas and vent some you know residual vapors uh, that were you know in the ground. We don't want a situation where they you know seep into the building and create a, a hazard. This is a very very you know this is very commonplace technology. Um, I got a school that was built in my district recently, uh, you know, over a brownfield site. And, um, 
it, it has, you know, apparatus to make sure that uh, any gases that may be below the building that may, uh, you know, as we say, uh, you know, volatilize and, and come up have to be, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, have to be vented from the building. And so, uh, you know, we apply this to schools, we apply this to, to all buildings and, you know, to the extent that people, uh, you know, do not, uh, you know, maintain these devices, do not report on their, uh, you know, um, operational status uh, leads, you know, OER to question whether or not they are indeed um, being, uh, 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 you know, maintained and are working efficiently. That, that, that's really the, the, the thrust of the, first, uh, of the first action item in this bill, is it not? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Um, and, and with regard to the other, uh, you know, part of the bill, uh, people, uh, you know, come to OER, they want to be a participant in, in, in the program. Of course, they, everybody wants the, you know, liability, you know, release, um, and then they get that. But what some, uh, you know, applicants don't want to do is, uh, you know, stay with the program, uh, and then they'll come to you, you know, after the fact and say, we're all done. Um, we did a great job, take our word for it, and then um, that is a problem because we have to, you know, almost do some kind of um, forensic analysis of whether or not um, all of the guidelines of, of the program were met, whether they cleaned up the proper specifications, uh, and how do we, you know, after the fact, like once the building has been built, uh, you know, endeavor to do that. It's much better if they stay with the program uh, and, you know, work hand in glove with, you know, OER, you know, throughout the entire process. Um, and this is really what the second action item in the bill seeks to, um, you, know, you know, seeks to enforce. That'd be a fair assessment of um, what, what, what we're talking about here? Yes, Chair Gennaro, that's, that, that, it, that would be. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, you know, put this all, um, uh, you know, on the record so that anyone who's watching will get a more full, you know, understanding of, uh, you know, the remedies that we're putting forward with this bill. Um, they are, you know, they are reasonable. They are necessary. Um, our, uh, uh, you know, local brownfields program, our, our local, you know, Municipal Brownfields Program, the only one of its kind in the country is, uh, as I said earlier, doing, uh, you know, more business than anyone thought it would. And, um, and, it, and, and it's fair to say that many of the Brownfields projects <clears throat> that are going through, you know, OER are in the most, uh, you, know, you know, or at least a, 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 a healthy percentage of them are in the most, um, you know, economically you know, distressed areas of the city where the revitalization brought on by the program is, you know, doing the most good. I mean, I, I had a vision when I, you know, came to the council of, you know, all these contaminated sites and figuring out a way to, um, you know, to, you know, uh, uh, remove the contamination, revitalize these sites, make them, uh, you know, make these sites part of the community once again, where they can serve as businesses, as, as residences, as schools, as, um, you know, make them, a, you know, a vibrant part of the community once again, and that has happened. But, you know, we can't allow uh, people who won't um, inspect their equipment or won't follow the program as they're doing their remediation to, um, uh, to uh, tie up and, uh, uh, you know, burden, uh, you know, OEM, it's best if everyone just complies. And this is what we are affecting by this, uh, by this, by this law. That's a fair statement. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, uh, uh, with that said, um, I will ask the moderator if anyone else has questions for Director McIntyre. Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Chair. Uh, at this point, I'd, last, I'd ask any council members to please use the Zoom raise hand function to ask any questions of, of the panelists. And at this point, we have Council Member Rosenthal. You may begin. Uh, Sergeant gives you the cue. Thank you. Um, 
I see Jasmine Rosenthal. I'm more than happy to recognize her. Thank you for being uh, engaged in this, uh, Council. Of course. Starting time. Um, I just want to state for the record, I understand the administration uh, was not able to testify today about the um, the uh, nighttime illumination um, bills. And I totally understand that for the record. I just want to, um, I'll be asking them to um, provide a little more information about how many buildings they'll be able to um, remove, uh, uh, you know, stop illumination for, how many are um, not uh, uh, essential, uh, how many are essential um, nighttime illuminations. Also, I'll be asking them if they would be able to remove uh, or shut down illumination both indoors and outdoors. Um, my bill predominant uh, seems to very clearly talk about outdoor but I'm uh, it, it also sort of alludes to indoor as well and I'll be asking them to uh, include indoor um, illumination as well I, I also want the public to know that I'll be listening to your testimony and and reading your testimony once you submit it and if there are tweaks, that I need to put into my bill, um, 274, I'm, I'm open to that and, and look forward to your feedback. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, Council Member, for your great advocacy and any, any support I can lend uh, uh, you know, to you in your endeavor to get more information from the administration. I'm happy to do that. <clears throat> As I've already mentioned, uh, I, I, I you know, it always kind of gets to me a little bit um, when, um, you know, when the administration regarding its own properties, its own buildings, its own facilities, you know, requires some kind of like phase in. It seems like they should be able to do it without a phase in, but you know, you're the expert on this and I you know, trust your impeccable judgment on, uh, you know, what is fair in terms of them uh, you know, uh, applying. So, um, yeah, uh, in, in the absence of the administration being here testifying on the bill, I, you know, you've laid out a paradigm, I think, that you know, works well. And I, I, I thank you for following up with them to make these bills the best they could possibly be. So thank you, Council. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. And um, um, Mr. Moderator, are there any other uh, um, uh, members that wish to be heard with regard to um, uh, information from Director McIntyre. There are none at this point, Chair. Okay, um, with that, I will, uh, I will thank Director McIntyre uh, for, his, for his good testimony and his good uh, work in you know, making sure pardon, that-, that, pardon, that, me, that pardon me, Chair, Council Member Ulrich had just, just raised his hand. Oh, okay, uh, sure, uh, it is-, it is it is my privilege to recognize Councilmember Elridge, and I uh, to, to recognize him and 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 also recognize recognize him being here and also recognize him for questions. Starting time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do want to apologize for joining the call uh, late, um, and my uh, visual is not uh, working. I'm having some technical difficulties, but. I did want to uh, jump on and see what the administration's position on intro 265 um, and uh, also uh, 274 in particular, uh, did, the, did the administration take a position on those bills, 265 and 274? I do apologize for being late. Sure, I, I, and, and that is something that, I mean, the only thing that I can, you know, speak to with regard to that. And, uh, that is not something that um, uh, Director McIntyre from OER is prepared to address. I don't think he's still even um, on the, uh, um, um, he, he, he has left the hearing having, the, oh, no, he, no, no he's, I'm, here. I'm, I'm he's, here. he's here. I'm still here. He's here, he's here, he's <laughs> here. Um, um, but uh, um, I was informed uh, by the council leadership that there would be no testimony by the administration on any bill other than 2460. 
And so uh, um, Councilmember Rosenthal is um, endeavoring to follow up with the administration regarding uh, you know the bill that you know she is um, sponsoring and um, and you're talking about two six five right which would be a uh, which would be a Brandon bill but um, um, I don't know what the position of the administration is on those bills I was just uh, informed as chair that they were not going to be providing testimony on those bills and so it's always better if we um, you know do this through the hearing process and not through um, a, a, a process that's open to the public but um, uh, that's what we have council member Um, uh, account, yes. Okay. You're, you're back on. Sorry. Yeah. I apologize. No, I, I do appreciate that. Again, I do apologize for being late. And I was just curious if the administration had taken a position on those bills, but I, I thank you uh, for clarifying that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You bet. You bet. Uh, thank you, council member. Um, and, um, Mr. Moderator, uh, with no one else wishing to be, is there anyone else that uh, any of the council members have any questions for uh, Director McIntyre on 2460? You know, you, you said no once already, but let me just, this is the final final, you know. At this point, at this time, no, there are no other members. Okay. Uh, I, 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 thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I will, uh, I, I will thank uh, 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 Director McIntyre for his uh, service to the hearing today. And um, um, unless you, I mean, you're more than welcome to stay for, uh, you know, to, 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 to listen in on the hearing, but, um, as far as, you know, your role in terms of, um, answering questions, you won't be called upon to, uh, to, uh, do that. So, um, um, up to you as to whether you want to log off or, uh, stay on and, 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 and hear, um, uh, uh, although, um, we, we, we may have members of the public who, uh, will testify on 2460. So that actually would be good for you to hear if anyone does have that. So um, it was it was my understanding that the witnesses were basically going to be uh, the witnesses from the public and from um, environmental organizations were going to be testifying on the illumination bills. But in case somebody wants to speak out on 2460, probably a good idea for you to be around to hear that. So let me amend that. So I, I, I would urge you to stay, uh, you know, uh, in, in case someone from the public has something to add on 2460. And uh, Mr. Moderator, I've been a bad boy. I've misplaced my um, witness list. I printed it out. I don't have it in front of me now. I don't want to take time to go look for it. So I'm going to depend upon you. Uh, to be um, announcing the witnesses. Is that okay, Mr. Moderator? Yep, that's perfectly fine, Chair. And I'll just quickly go over a quick procedural item on public panelists. At uh, this point, we'll be turning to public testimony, and I'd like to remind everyone that we'll be calling on individuals one by one to testify. Each panelist will be given three minutes to speak. So once your name is called, a member of our staff will unmute you, and the Sergeant at Arms will give you the go-ahead to begin upon setting the timer. So please, again, wait for the sergeant to announce that you may begin before delivering your panel, uh, de delivering your testimony. Council members who have a question for a particular panelist should, you, should use the Zoom hand, raise hand function, and I'll call on you after the plan, panelist has completed their testimony. At this point, we'll first be hearing from Catherine Skopik of the Sierra Club, followed by Caitlin Parkins. Thank you, Chair of the All Committee. Right, Please begin. Thank you, Chair of the Environmental uh, Protection Committee, uh, James Gennaro, and New York City Council members for this opportunity to address the issues of safety for peak avian migration periods of local laws intro 265, 271, 274, all of 2018. And I also want to say that uh, we do support the other three bills as well. And Mr. McIntyre, I would be interested to know as we do have <clears throat> within our group an urban sustainability committee 
and if there's any way that we can assist you uh, in the OER with the remediation process. I would be interested to know if there's any way we can be of support to you in that. And we support the, uh, the sound bills as well, the noise bills as well. Uh, my name is Catherine Skopik. I am chair of Sierra Club New York City group, as the council said, and I'm also a delegate to the Atlantic chapter. That's the state level of Sierra Club. National Audubon Society and International Dark Sky Association have teamed up in preparing a report in 2020, what you should know about bird migration and light pollution. And I quote, by turning off excess lighting, we can help to provide migrating birds safe passage between their nesting and wintering grounds. 70% of terrestrial birds in North America are migratory and 80% of those birds migrate at night. Artificial light at night can disorient birds and their, uh, from their roots and cause collisions with buildings as Helen Rosenthal, council member has stated and thank you council member Rosenthal for this wonderful bill. Um, back in 2015, when council member Donovan Richards was chair of the committee on environmental protection, uh, he held a hearing on nighttime lighting. I even made buttons for it, uh, conserve nighttime lighting. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and I also presented testimony in nighttime, limiting nighttime lighting and was quoted in the New York Times, Thursday, April 30th, 2015, referring to the visual impact of New York City's nighttime skyline. I said, many of us have felt a sense of pride in its beauty. However, now that we are in this climate crisis, we see these lights as something else. We see them as wasteful of energy. Today, I testify that these lights from city owned and city controlled spaces during peak aviation migration periods are number one, endangering one of our most delicate, sensitive, threatened, treasured species that know no boundaries or borders that belong to all citizens, all countries and all cities of the world, migratory birds. And two, that in this time of accelerated climate crisis- Time expired. Uh, uh, please conclude your train of thought, Catherine. Oh, okay. Um, and that uh, we, we, because of the climate crisis, we do not need unnecessary nighttime lighting. So these two issues are related. Audubon studies show that two thirds of North America's birds are at risk of extinction due to climate change. Dim the lights, we save the birds. Dim the lights, we save the planet. Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine, for your good testimony and your great advocacy on behalf of the Sierra Club, both on, on a local level and a, uh, um, and a state level. Really privileged that you, you know, you're able to uh, uh, join us today. And before we ask if Councilman Rosenthal or anyone has any questions for you, uh, I just want to make a note to uh, to my um, legislative director, uh, Mabby uh, 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 Cower, to reach out through the council staff to find out Catherine's contact information so that we can relay that to Mark McIntyre from OER, as Catherine indicated a you know, desire to play a supportive role, her and her um, organization with good work of um, uh, uh, Director McIntyre and OER. So Nabby, if you could figure out how to get them connected, that would be, that would be great. And that uh, uh, you know, concludes what I have and if, uh, um, um, I don't, I don't see any uh, questions for Catherine. So thank you very thank much for your dedicated you. work throughout the years on this issue. Um, we're, we're, we're finally going to get this done. Um, and we thank you for that. Um, uh, Mr. Moderator, let's call the next witness. Our next witness is Caitlin Parkins who will be followed by Ryan Monell. Starting time. Thank you. My name is Caitlin Parkins. I'm a scientist at New York City Audubon, a bird conservation nonprofit and a member of the Lights Out Coalition. The two deadliest obstacles birds face in New York City are glass and light. And in 2019, the city council passed Local Law 15, addressing glass and establishing the city as a leader in bird conservation. Now we must take the second step, 
reducing nighttime light pollution. As we just heard, 70% of North American bird species are migratory, and of these, 80% migrate at night. Millions of birds, we have radar data from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology showing millions of birds migrating over New York City every year. Artificial light at night attracts and disorients these nocturnal migrants. The bright lights of the city draw them off of their roots from up to three miles away. Then, unable to continue passage, they land in unsafe places, vulnerable on our sidewalks to predators and foot traffic, and with a maze of built infrastructure to navigate. But many don't even make it that far, instead crashing into lit windows, their thousand mile journeys ending abruptly in deadly collisions with glass. This issue captured the attention of media outlets and people across the country this fall when one of our volunteers collected 200 dead songbirds in a single morning. The compounded death toll is enormous. 230,000 birds die here every year due to window collisions. Turning off lights saves birds in two ways. First, it stops nocturnal collisions with lit windows, and second, it reduces the number of birds attracted to areas where they are at risk of collisions the following day. Research also shows that the collective light pollution of many buildings, the urban glow, attracts birds at a broad scale. So if an individual building reduces its lighting, birds may just collide with the adjacent one. So while we applaud individual buildings taking voluntary action, in New York City, we have over a million buildings. Legislative action requiring a reduction in light pollution is imperative to have a meaningful impact. Reducing light pollution will allow our migratory birds to safely pass the city or land in our green spaces out of harm's way. Local Law 15 is leading to a safer city for birds in the future, and we urge the passing of intros 265, 271, and 274 to reduce bird deaths now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh Thank you very much, Caitlin, for your good testimony. Just stay one second. I've just been uh, uh, texted that uh, um, Council Member Steve Levin, a member of the committee, uh, has joined us. I want to acknowledge him. <clears throat> and uh, 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 Caitlin, I want to thank you and um, Audubon and the uh, you know Lights Out Coalition and bring you to everyone's um, attention the very uh, uh, um, you know startling statistic of. 230,000 uh, bird kills per year in New York City, I guess that we know of or that we can assess. Mm -hmm. And so um, um, uh, um, is there a chance that that number is even higher? I mean, how would we assess that? It is. It's difficult to come up with that number. So that number was estimated via a study done um, over a decade ago now, um, basically looking at collisions, using our data from volunteer collision monitoring po uh, patrols and extrapolating to the rest of the city based on the data that we have. Um, we also did a carcass study where uh, we found that volunteers who are actually looking at birds um, or looking for birds only find about 20% of the birds that are actually on the ground. And so we're able to use that number to sort of realize that our volunteers are actually finding far fewer birds than, uh, than actually are hitting windows. So that's how we came up with that estimate. In the last decade, there's been more lights and more glass added to the city skyline. So I do expect that that number is actually higher um, now. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of what I thought and what I you know tried to elicit in my question. And thank you for, for doing that. <clears throat> um, um, I hope I'm not um, usurping the role of the moderator, but I do see that Councilmember Rosenthal has her hand up, and um, I recognize Councilmember Rosenthal for questions. Starting time. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Parkins. Thank you so much for testifying and for your um, um, scientific information. Really appreciate that. Um, I have a technical question, actually, about my own bill. Um, in reading it, there's not clarity about whether or not it applies to indoor lighting for city-owned buildings. It explicitly speaks to um, non-essential outdoor illumination. Would you recommend that we be more specific in the language of the bill to explicitly refer to indoor lighting as well? Um, I do think that exterior um, artificial lighting is the most important issue to address. The, um, however, individual lit windows, um, birds do collide more with individual lit windows uh, than unlit windows. So that is also important. Um, I think 
the most important thing is to take a step forward in reducing artificial lighting in a way that uh, is agreeable to folks. Um, and so I think addressing both would be great, but exterior illumination, I believe, in my scientific opinion, is the most important. Right, so there's, we could prioritize one over the other, but if there's an opportunity to eliminate the indoor lighting as well, because it, yes, it's usually individual rooms. And to Ms. Scott-Pick's um, point, it's also important for the environment as well. And apologies if I mispronounced your name, Scopic. Um, but okay, got it. Thank you very much for that guidance. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, thank you, Councilmember Rosenthal. Are there any other questions? Uh, any other questions for this uh, witness, um, Mr. Moderator? No, Chair. Okay. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, uh, thank you once again, Caitlin, for your very uh, compelling testimony and your uh, uh, you know pertinent data that uh, uh, is you know quite alarming. Uh, thank you again. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ryan Monell, who will be followed by Christine Shepard. Starting time. Well, well, thank you. And thanks, Chair Gennaro. I'm Ryan Monell with the Real Estate Board of New York. I appreciate the time, the opportunity to testify today. Um, first off, I'd like to say that Rebney supports reasonable efforts to protect the city's avian population and is proud to partner with the Audubon Society on the Lights Out Initiative. Um, each year, Rebney encourages its members to participate in this initiative to turn out lights in their buildings during migration season uh, from midnight to dawn. Uh, promotion of this initiative continues on an annual basis for us and we welcome the council and the city's collaboration in this matter. Uh, with that said, we do have some concerns with a few bills that are being heard today, uh, particularly intro 265, uh, which would actually prohibit nighttime illumination of the exterior or the interior of any building whose main or dominant occupancy is classified in group B or M for students in the New York City Building Code. Uh, REVNI and its members share the goals of reducing our carbon footprint, which is also, we believe, uh, one of the, the intent of, of, of this bill in terms of limiting uh, emissions. Uh, however, for several operational reasons, Intro 265 is unlikely to reduce carbon emissions and instead poses substantial problems for the city that never sleeps. Indeed, indeed realizing the goals of this law would dramatically disrupt the operations of commercial buildings where significant activity occurs at night. Uh, further, commercial buildings by code are required to have a certain amount of threshold uh, lighting on at all times. This includes all stairwells and elevators and elevator lobbies, major paths of egress in common areas to aid in safe circulation through building spaces. Um, additionally, the bill is silent to newer structures with marquee exterior lighting, such as the World Trade Center and one Vanderbilt, both of which were subject to significant design review and how they would be treated under the statute is very unclear. Uh, finally, lighting at night also plays an important role in, in increasing public safety by increasing visibility on streets that can help deter crime. Uh, as a result, we're opposed to Intro 265, absent significant modifications to address the many operational concerns raised by this bill. Uh, going to the Brownfield legislation, Intro 2460, uh, the New York Brownfield Cleanup Program is targeted towards remediating and repurposing contaminated and blighted areas known as Brownfield sites. Uh, however, a robust enforcement mechanism is, is vital to maintaining the integrity of the program. The bill language that is proposed today in 2460 appears overly broad. It could ultimately unintentionally penalize well-intentioned actors of in, or entities. Uh, the bill is inconsistent with existing OER programs and should be refined to target the, pro, the, the problem of select subset of second party non-compliance. Uh, this should include any such person as transferee Successes, successors or assigns rather than referring to an entity. Uh, there also is a lack of recourse mechanism to ensure participants have due process. And as a result, we'd be happy to work with the council and the city to craft legislation that meets these goals uh, by revising uh, these concerns. Uh, as always, we appreciate your consideration of these points. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ryan. I, uh... I didn't see that coming on the uh, on, on 2460, and um, so we have to um, take a look at that pretty quickly. Um, if you could, um, you know, set something up with uh, Nabby, you know, you know, you know how to get her, and um, let's get this, um, you know, let's get this 
discuss. Um, you know, that way, so we would want to move quickly uh, um, on that. Um, with regard to um, uh, 265, um, uh, 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 Councilman Rosenthal um, has, uh, you know, she is number two on, uh, you know, 265. I'm going to, um, you know, defer to her to uh, pose questions to you on your uh, uh, opposition uh, to certain uh, aspects of 265. So uh, I, I, I recognize Councilman Rosenthal to engage with you in uh, colloquy. And uh, if need be, because she is a member, I'm willing to uh, um, suspend the five minute rule. Like we'll see how that goes. Okay, because it's, it's like important stuff. We got to get this worked out. Okay, uh, I recognize Councilman Rosenthal. Great, thank you Sergeant so Todd. much. I appreciate I appreciate that, Chair Gennaro. Thank you, Sergeant, and thank you, Committee Council, for unmuting me. Ryan, uh, really appreciate your feedback, and of course, I'm not the lead sponsor of the bill, um, but I I would just want to um, or urge the sponsor to look through. Um, your testimony sort of point by point in from what I heard you say, um, I don't think the bill um, requires, I don't think, I think your concerns are ones that are not, um, don't arise with the bill. Um, in other words, you know, I don't think the bill is talking about elevator lighting or stairwell lighting, or lobby floor lighting, all of those things which are critical for security. So I would ask you to think about that in terms of your testimony. Um, similarly, you know, the bill has a waiver built into it that people can reach out. And similarly, um, I mean, I just, I don't, when I read the bill, I don't read it the way your testimony seems to be opposed to it. Um, so I would hope that you could have a thoughtful conversation with the bill drafter. Um, I, I, maybe you could tell me something compelling. I, I love okay. you know working I, with you. Um, I just didn't see it in your, I didn't understand I why your testimony resulted in a no. I appreciate it. And, and just to be clear, I mean, we, we do, number one, as I mentioned, you know, we, we very much appreciate the opportunity to work with the Audubon Society on the Lights Out initiative. It's been a really um, important initiative for a long time, and many of our members take it very seriously. Yeah. Um, and so any opportunity to continue that effort through legislation is really important to us. Um, look, I think that we just have great concern as it pertains to um, the operation and management of buildings, uh, particularly as it pertains to indoor illumination. Um, and how that really interacts with this legislation from a practical perspective. We do understand yeah. that there are exemptions that are outlined in the bill with that said, um, and also rules promulgation that would have to, to, to happen with the Department of Buildings in particular. Um, but with that said, um, we do see unforeseen consequences that uh, could lead to issues as it pertains to safety and uh, building operations. We also, we're, we're looking at 260, um, um, uh, Another 265, bill. 265 through the lens of sustainability as well, which we know is incredibly important, not only to the council, but to also many of our members uh, who are looking to lower their building, um, buildings, carbon footprints through local yeah. seven yeah. and other issues. Um, I would and just you ask see how this really adds to that um, in, a, in a practical way. So look, Again, I think we're, we're intent on working with the, the council to find opportunities to come to a, a, a good solution. But as it pertains yeah. to 265, uh, we see uh, some issues as it's currently written. Yeah, I mean, again, with all due respect, I'm, I'm just not reading the legislation the way you are. And, you know, I, I just wanted that to be on the record um, again, because I will have no role in negotiating this bill. So, um, but I just wanted the record to reflect that I'm, I'm not seeing what you're raising. And I, you know, appreciate the, um, the group of buildings you represent 100%. 
Um, I just think that in order to have a good, my, my recommendation to you would be sort of off the record, um, on the record, is to uh, present concerns that are real concerns and you'll have a higher likelihood of trying to figure something out. But by including things that I think are extraneous to what the bill is getting toward, um, I, it doesn't, I don't think it helps the argument. But again, I say that with all due respect and un understanding that you represent a wide group. The only other um, of buildings, the only other point I wanted to raise is that in my bill, the lights out starts at 11. And I heard in your testimony that you urge your buildings uh, lights out starting at midnight. Mm -hmm. And so you might want to have a discussion with Audubon Society about following best practices there. And maybe it would be easy enough as you um, work with your buildings and encourage them to sort of do things that they start lights out at midnight. I mean, at 11. Instead. Well, we're certainly happy to do so, Councilwoman. And even though you're not the, the lead sponsor of this piece of legislation, 265, um, we would appreciate any opportunity to work with you in your office uh, as we work with the main sponsor and Chair Gennaro on this legislation. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think my guidance would be focus on the points that are real so that everyone can really know what we're trying to negotiate around. Otherwise, it's sort of noise and it, it makes it harder. Understood. Anyway, but I'm I I agree with you also on unintended consequences and wanting to make sure that doesn't happen. I think everyone can be on the same page with this bill, um, and and achieve our goals of lights off, uh, indoors and out, outside illumination, um, in in nighttime. Okay. Thanks okay. so much. Thank you, Chair. Thank Back. you. Uh, 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 thank you, Councilman Rosenthal, and. Uh, <clears throat> Ryan, once again, I'll, I'll, I'll um, in, make a note to my uh, in legislative director, Abby, that um, you know, she get the full text of your uh, testimony. We no longer have Mark McIntyre on the hearing that I can see. <clears throat> so, um, Navi, I'm talking to her now. We have a little bit of scrambling to do. Um, to make sure that we get, because uh, any, anytime I hear the, you know, you know, red flag of, um, of, of um, you know, you know, potential danger to people who work in buildings <clears throat> and, um, um, and balancing, you know, the you know, reality that, you know, that you know, street illumination is a, you know, is a, you know, crime deterrent. We, we, we have to, uh, uh, take a very close look at that. And so um, if you can get your full testimony, which you probably already submitted, but just make sure that um, my legislative director, Nabby, has that submitted to her right now. And then, um, you know, Nabby and I can, uh, you know, uh, interact with, uh, you know, central staff, the council and the administration to find out, you know, where they are kind of on these issues. And I see that great. council... Sure. Yeah, uh, you bet. And uh, um, I, 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 I see that Councilman Rosenthal uh, mm -hmm. wants the final word on it's this. I'm, I'm happy it. to recognize her. I'm happy to recognize her again. <laughs> Not final words, sir. Absolutely, Chair. Always defer to you. Um, but I think what I'm trying to say is that we are all focused on making sure our streets are safe. And illumination from lobbies and from external, you know, lighting at lobbies, I think is incredibly important. Um, I think if we were to bring Ms. Parkins back from Audubon, she would say that that lighting having to do with safety is very different than what the Audubon Society knows for a fact is a problem with lighting on buildings above the first and second floor. So again, I would urge you to rewrite your testimony to focus on things that are actually problematic, right? 
no one, um, I would agree 100% with Chair Gennaro and you that we certainly don't want to do anything that would cause um, our streets to be dark and therefore not have safety. But the assertion that this bill, uh, Council Member Brannon's bill, results in less safety on the street, I think is erroneous. Well, uh, I, and I mean, we, again, Councilwoman, with all due respect, and, and, and we're not trying to make broad accusations or, or, or work in bad faith. You know, we want to find an opportunity to, to find consensus and, and work with all uh, great interested parties and make something work. Great. That's, that's, that's good for everybody. So yeah, no, that. I agree. It's just easier, easier to um, address issues when we're focused on the ones that are problematic. Like yeah. I would argue probably that what Revney in representing its buildings would be most concerned about is those buildings that don't pay attention and have you know, rooms in commercial buildings lit at night because people were too lazy to turn the off switch, yeah. right? That, that's, I think, your real argument, at which point, gosh, let's have a discussion about that. Is it possible for those buildings to use technology that where, you know, after 11 o'clock at night, you know, the lights only go on if someone's there, right? Or right. someone turns on the switch and otherwise the lights automatically turn off, right? Again, wanting to be very sure that we're not causing a safety problem for say the cleaning people who are there at night doing their job and we wouldn't wanna put them in unsafe, dark situations, right? Mm -hmm. For sure for sure, <laughs> can't emphasize that enough. Um, so if you, I just think that when you negotiate this bill with, with everyone in the council, whoever the proper people are, focusing on those issues, which are real issues, yeah. would help guide the conversation as opposed to street safety and needing lighting on the streets. I'm well, pretty confident. I, I understand. And I can assure you that our members are focused on any efforts to create greater sustainability for their, their infrastructure, uh, as well as safety. Um, and, and certainly um, the efforts through these, these pieces of legislation today, uh, we're more than happy to talk in, in great specificity in regards to what can be done to, to make things work. Thank, Thank you so, you so and, much. And, I appreciate and, that clarity. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, 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 thank you, Councilman Rosenthal. Uh, you know, thank you, Ryan. Please, uh, uh, please, you know, send that stuff over to Nabby, and we'll uh, on both twenty four sixty and two sixty five, and whatever else you have on your mind, because we want to, um, you know, come to you know come to closure on this. So, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. and always good to speak with you. And uh, with that, I'll ask the moderator to call the next one. Thank you. Our next witness is Christine Shepard, who will be followed by Lisa Cole. Starting time. Thank you, council members, for listening to my testimony. I'm Dr. Christine Shepard, Director of American Bird Conservancy's Glass Collisions Program. I've been working on problems caused by excess artificial lighting at night and its negative impacts on birds and on people um, for about 20 years now. One important thing that I've learned is that this is a complex problem that we can't fix one building at a time. Uh, it's not just lights from tall buildings um, that attract birds and impact people, even ground level lighting of streets and parking lots can actually have an effect. In addition to luring birds into danger, causing depression and other effects on people, unnecessary night lighting wastes money, wastes energy, creates greenhouse gases, and makes it impossible for us to see the stars. New York City has recognized the importance of birds to sustainability with Local Law 15 of 2020, 
the approach with this legislation is an excellent one that could make a huge difference both locally and by inspiring other jurisdictions mm -hmm. to follow suit. American Bird Conservancy strongly supports legislation restricting lighting um, at night in New York City. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Shepard. Certainly appreciate the benefit of your views. And so I would take it um, that you, you, you um, indicate that you're in favor of the bills that would restrict illumination. So, so, so we're going to put you on the record as supporting 265, 271, 274, right? Is that, That's is correct. That? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I that I that I, that I got that straight. So you're so you're uh you know you're in favor of that of that um, suite of bills. We, Absolutely. So and if I may ask, what uh, 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 species of bird is behind you in the graphic? That's a marvelous spatula-tailed hummingbird. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I never seen anything like that. So. Um, um, yeah, thank you for bringing that to um, our attention and make sure uh, that you uh, uh, um, submit your good testimony in, in, in writing to our staff so we have the uh, you know, benefit of the full scope of, of your statement. Thank you again. Okay, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Moderator, if there are no questions for, uh, for uh, Dr. Shepard, we can proceed to the next one. Okay, our next speaker is Lisa Cole, who will be followed by Kathy Nizari. Starting time. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Council Member Rosenthal, for her bill and for recognizing the Wild Bird Fund. Avian migration is a massive nocturnal event. 12 million birds were detected flying over Cape Cod on a single autumn night. We don't know much about how they navigate, but scientists tell us they are drawn to light. I'm Lisa Cole from the Wild Bird Fund, New York City's only wildlife rehabilitation hospital. Thank you for hearing our testimony today, supporting the proposals to reduce light pollution and help birds, specifically bills 265, 271, and 274. During migration seasons, we admit hundreds of birds injured by collisions with buildings. It isn't a steady flow. Some days, just a few birds are brought in, but sometimes by 10 a.m., dozens of new collision patients wait for care. A recent study from Cornell by Van Dorn and colleagues, including Dr. Farnsworth, who testifies today, may tell us why this happens. The scientists studied 20 years of bird collision data from Chicago's McCormick Place, a conference center on the shores of Lake Michigan, notorious for bird strikes. They found collision risk linked to three factors, number of birds migrating, wind, and light. Exterior lighting was important since Chicago began its lights out policy, Collisions at McCormick decreased by 80%. But interior lighting was very important too. Decreasing the area of lit windows by half reduced collisions by six or 11 fold. Wild Bird Fund experience is consistent with their results. Days of largest patient intakes often follow nights of heavy migration when weather is poor. And disproportionately more patients come from the commercial, brighter lit areas of town. Imagine being on a plane landing in New York on a stormy night, that moment when the aircraft breaks through the clouds and you see the bright lights of the city, the towers of Wall Street, the blaze of Times Square. That's what birds see too, except to get through the storm, there's no plane to guide them and their innate navigation system is confused by light. They arrive to find an obstacle course of tall buildings and the next day, a maze of mirrors. Please help these wild visitors avoid getting waylaid or worse in our city by passing the legislation before you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa, very much for not only being here to testify, give us the benefit of your views, but also your great advocacy in terms of, of, of uh, you know, of, of, of uh, you know, tending to you know medically those birds that have been uh, hurt by by this by this. Um, by this, you know, phenomenon of um, light in New York City, we certainly do appreciate that. Thank uh, you, Jerry. and we sure, and and we we would urge you to uh, uh, submit to council staff the uh, 
full text of your um, remarks so we can get the benefit of your um, of your views. And the sooner the better on that because we're coming to closure on uh, on the session and we want to get everyone's good view. Yes, thank you. We, we shall. Yes. And and our director, Rita McMahon, is also testifying today. Oh, great. Great. Uh, we look forward to her testimony. Uh, thank you. And, if, if, and, and if there are no questions for uh, Lisa, Mr. Moderator, we'll nope. move to the next witness. OK, our next speaker is Kathy Nazari, who will be followed by Sherry Reich. Starting time. Good afternoon, Chairman Gennaro and members of the Environmental Protection Committee. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak about an issue that impacts the lives of millions of migratory birds each year and also impacts everyday New Yorkers and our sidewalks. My name is Kathy Mazzari. I'm, I am the co-chair of the Village Independent Democrats, a BIP Animal Welfare Committee and lead organizer of the Lights Out Coalition. As we now turn the corner on fall, we also complete a violent cycle of unnecessary and completely preventable deaths of migratory birds who fly by New York City along the Atlantic Flyway on their way south. Each spring and fall, millions make this journey and over 200,000 of those birds die in our city from colliding with glass windows and disorienting artificial nighttime light. That's only in New York. Up to a billion birds die from colliding with tall glass buildings across the country annually. Intros 265, 271, and 274, collectively the Lights Out bills, are designed to limit light pollution in New York City. These bills not only reduce the death toll of migratory birds, but they also help conserve electricity and tackle light pollution. Intros 271 and 274 are focused on city-owned properties that are unlikely to be occupied at night. They create reasonable time limits on lighting, only apply during the migratory period, and also give the city the tools it needs to comply with the limits by installing building occupancy sensors on city property. Intro 265 extends nighttime lighting restrictions to businesses, but only when it is safe to do so and exempts small businesses. BID is part of one of the largest coalitions of animal protection organizations in New York that have joined together in support of the Lights Out Bill. You will hear from, and you've already heard from, some of our um, coalition members today, and you will also hear from others via email. In addition, over 27,000 people from across the city have signed a petition in support of these bills. Supporters range from advocates, ordinary New Yorkers, to real estate developers and owners of some of the tallest skyscrapers in the city. We are all standing together to speak up because the hundreds of thousands of migratory birds who die unnecessarily each year do not have a voice. Dozens of cities across the country have enacted lights out, and Suffolk County is enacting a light pollution amendment to their county code to reduce sky dwells. New York City must get on board. Therefore, we thank Helen Rosenthal and Justin Brannon for sponsoring these bills and urge you all to pass intros 265, 271, and 274 to dramatically reduce the senseless death and injury to birds. Thank you for your time. Uh, uh, thank you, Kathy, for your very uh, you know, compelling testimony and for your great advocacy on behalf of the uh, now, with the Light Cell Coalition, you're, you're the chair of the Light Cell Coalition. Is that, is that right? Uh, well, it, I wouldn't say it's that formal, but I it, I was the person who put the coalition together. Yeah, okay. Um, um, by the power vested in me, I declare you the chair. Okay. <laughs> and, and so, um, and I was, you know, not aware of what they were doing in, you know, Suffolk County, but now we do know. <laughs> and uh uh, I, I, I would uh, uh, urge you to, uh, you know, transmit your testimony if you've not already done so to council staff, so that we can give it the, uh, you know, due the you know due consideration that it does deserve. And really appreciate you being, you know, with us here today. We look forward to other members um, of the coalition who will be speaking out in terms of the suite of bills. And uh, so, thank you again. And um, Mr. Moderator, if there are no questions for Kathy, we can move to the next witness. Very well. Our next speaker is Sherry Reich, who will be followed by Edita Berncrant. Starting time. 
Hello, Chair Gennaro and New York City Council Committee members on environmental protection. My name is Sherry Reich with the League of Humane Voters, and we are part of the Lights Out New York City Coalition. I can remember my childhood days walking outside in the spring and summer and hearing the chirping and songs of birds. If I was quick enough, I would see a fleeting image of them as they bounced from tree to tree. Honestly, the sounds today are not the same. There are far fewer birds than, that I now hear. Sadly, more than 22 species were listed as extinct this year, several of them being birds. Birds who fly in New York are more likely to have collisions with buildings due to the lighting and the light pollution they create. We must protect the biodiversity of our world. What would our world sound like without the beautiful songs of birds? Or walking in Central Park and finding no birds to view through our binoculars? We are lucky enough to live on the Eastern Corridor, one of the biggest migration paths of birds. It is a joy to see all the different species of birds and if only for a moment view them with awe and wonderment. It is incumbent on us to ensure that they have safe travels. City lights confuse birds during their migration and in general, they're often paralyzed, flying in circles, having lost their way. The light pollution is such a threat to birds as it causes the birds to collide into the buildings. These collisions cause injuries and sometimes death. The lucky ones are rescued and rehabilitated and released, but not every bird is lucky. And those that do help these injured birds do so out of their own pockets, since New York City does not aid wildlife rehabilitators. We must take action before it is too late and save the birds who either migrate through New York City or who make New York City their home. Please co-sponsor and pass the three bills to limit light pollution in New York City intros 274, 265, and 271. I want to personally thank Council Member Rosenthal for her important bill as I am her constituent. I also recognize the miraculous work of the Wild Bird Fund. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Sherry, for your very you know, compelling and, and, and moving uh, you know, uh, testimony. <clears throat> Um, it, it is it is great to receive you know testimony that not only comes from an illumined mind but an open heart. That's what I think we have in your testimony. And um, yes, we all will be crying when um, when when <laughs> Helen leaves the council. That is for sure. <clears throat> and um, so I, I appreciate your service on behalf of the League of Humane Voters and. Uh, you know, all of your good uh, um, advocacy on this suite of bills. I would not, um, I would not bet against the passage of these bills. And so, um, thank you for uh, you know joining the chorus of people who want us to make this a safer city for birds. Really appreciate you being with us today. And um, and um, I'm going to cry when Helen leaves too. Trust me. <laughs> Uh, and with, 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 with no questions for Sherry, Mr. Moderator, I, we can call the next witness. Uh, although recognizing that Sherry is a very hard act to follow, you know. I'll do very well. Agreed. Our next speaker is Edita Bernkrant, who will be followed by Steve Gruber. Starting time. Thank you, committee. My name is Adita Bernkrant. I'm the executive director of NICLASS, and we're an animal protection and environmental advocacy organization based in New York. We have hundreds of thousands of members across New York, and we really are strongly in support of the three bills, intro 265, 271, and 274. Um, I just sort of see these as a win-win. This has been a long problem for such a long time. You've heard all the amazing testimony um, from others, and I don't need to repeat that, but I will say that, you know, I'm personally a huge bird lover. I've spent a lot of, I spend a lot of time at the Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge and just love observing wildlife, and so do so many other New Yorkers, and I've gotten so many frantic calls and emails from people devastated, horrified at finding all of these beautiful dead birds at, you know, the foot of so many buildings and as we heard before, hundreds of birds often during peak migratory times. And this just doesn't have to happen. And it shouldn't be happening anymore. And I see this as a win-win, you know, cutting down light, light pollution that uh, affects quality of life for people. And if we can save hundreds of thousands 
of these amazing, beautiful birds that so many people appreciate. Um, it's a win-win. And um, I personally have been involved with rescuing injured birds and the, you know, the wild, uh, the wild bird fund is so overwhelmed. There's only so many rescues they can do and so many don't make it to their doorstep and passing uh, these bills would really set a tone and make New York a leader in this way. And I just also want to say it was disappointing to hear the real estate board um, testifying against this kind of based on things that the bill already addresses. And um, perhaps if they had all these dead birds dumped at their doorsteps, they would feel differently and understand why people feel so strongly about this coming, you know, I can't tell you how many times we've frantically been contacted by people who are so upset at seeing this and knowing that there's a solution here um, that would really be a win-win. So I just want to stress <laughs> again that we strongly support this. We've been getting so much positive feedback across the city from our supporters who really want to see this pass, who many couldn't be here to testify in person, but will be sending in testimony. So I want to thank Helen Rosenthal and Justin Brannon for these bills. And I think they're long overdue. And um, I want to thank the committee. And I really hope that we can pass these bills out of the committee and get this passed. So we go into 2022 with a lot, lot less dead birds. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Adita. Um, I, I, I see that you have a cat in the in, in the background who I'm yeah. I'm sure is a lover of birds in his or her own way. You know what I mean? Yes. We got yes. gotta, gotta watch out for that. Um, uh, my 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 wife and I rescued five cats and only found homes for two, and so we have three. So we have um, yeah, plenty of bird lovers in in, in our house as well except um it you know my my cats tend to look at birds in a different way than i look at them you know um and uh certainly appreciate all the work that you and you know nine class do on you know so many issues and uh you very much appreciate your good um uh, testimony and uh appreciate you being here today and 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 others that you'll reach out to on behalf of bill we, uh, thank, we do. thank you so much we do thank you for that and uh um <clears throat> and with um uh if there are no questions uh for this witness we'll uh mr moderator will go on to the next witness next up is steve gruber who will be followed by Lawrence sniff starting time Hi, good afternoon. Um, I actually have three cats here who are listening intently to me talking about birds. So uh, thank you for that, uh, Chair Gennaro. Um, uh, my name is Steve Gruber. I'm Director of Communications for the Mayor's Alliance for New York City's Animals. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, Chair Gennaro and the members of the Committee on Environmental Protection for the opportunity to speak today on intros number 265, 271, and 274. Uh, three bills that are designed to limit light pollution in New York City. Uh, since our inception in 2003, the Mayor's Alliance has worked toward improving the lives of uh, animals in New York City. Our primary mission has been in, uh, centered on improving the welfare of owned and homeless pets, but our concerns have always extended to the welfare of all animals, including wildlife, with which we share our community. As a member of the Lights Out Coalition, the Mayor's Alliance joins our colleagues in support of these three important bills. While we understand that light pollution creates a wide range of negative consequences, our focus is on its effect on wildlife, particularly migratory birds. We know they are drawn to light. We know that on evenings during migration seasons, birds will alter their paths and approach areas with increased light pollution. We know that this will cause them to lose their way and lure them toward tall glass buildings. And we know, unfortunately, the devastating results of our winged friends whose, uh, for our winged friends whose lifeless bodies litter our streets after colliding with buildings. Um, our, our friends at the Wild Bird Front do a uh, heroic job working to save and rehabilitate uh, the birds that survive. But thousands of these precious birds don't survive, and that's a tragedy we can prevent. 
In, uh, intros 274, 265, and 271 can reduce light pollution in New York City without disrupting our quality of life. By implementing these new measures, we can actually improve the quality of life for New Yorkers by ensuring that uh, non-essential lighting does not disrupt their sleep schedules. And by doing so, we can save the lives of countless birds, save the city money, and reduce our carbon footprint. So these proposals are a win-win for everyone, human and non-human alike. New York City has acted before to reduce harm to our winged friends who pass through our city. We turned off the twin beams of light in tribute to 9-11 victims during peak migratory times. And in 2019, the New York City Council passed legislation that requires bird safe glass in new construction. But unfortunately, that bill does not impose requirements on existing buildings. We need to do more if we are to further reduce injury and death to I'm the sorry. migratory uh, birds. Uh, please finish your, uh, your, your thoughts. Okay, uh, we, uh, well, we need to do more to uh, uh, further reduce injury and death to the migratory birds who travel New York City's airways. And we therefore support the passage of these bills to make New York City a safer, gentler pass through for our migratory bird visitors. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve. And um, uh, uh, you know, thank you for providing a great home to uh, three cats. Uh, uh, as I do, and, uh, yeah, we, we, and, and then uh, we had one that we brought in and, and, you know, for like three months and uh, she was the mother of the, of the litter and, and, and she just didn't want to hear about like domestication, just like, just wasn't having it. <laughs> and um, so now she lives in our backyard in like a, in like a heated kitty condo, you know, mm -hmm. with like three squares a day and, 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 um, she does just fine. We wish she'd come indoors, but she didn't want to know about it. And, um, anyway, so now that's on the city council record. My, my, you know, um, yeah. So, um, it's funny what I put on the record, but that, that is on the record. Um, and, uh, and I, I, I see that Councilman Rosenthal, has uh, uh, some uh, questions for you. So I recognize Councilmember Rosenthal for questions. Great, thank you so much for that chair. Steve, um, can I ask you, um, are you, I couldn't quite understand uh, your title or the organization. If I could just jump in for a second with, with a note to the sergeants to, uh, I, 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 I think we have to have the five minute clock for council member questioning at this point to get through the so Thank you. I'll just put that on. <clears throat> Thank you. Steve, are you um, speaking on behalf of the mayor's office? No, the Mayor's Alliance for New York City's Animals. What is that organization? We are uh, the Mayor's Alliance. Uh, we're a, a nonprofit organization that was founded in 2003 uh, to uh, basically transform New York City into a no-kill city by reducing euthanasia at the city shelters. So we worked over th through the years with over 150 rescue groups and shelters um, and animal care centers of New York City to reduce the euthanasia at the shelters. Sure, sure. And um, yeah, okay. I'm focused on the birds uh, today, um, but gotcha, thank you. And so would your, uh, organization, nonprofit organization, are you submitting for the record support of these three bills? Yes, ma'am, we are. Okay. We have. And so you've submitted that testimony. You're right. When I, when okay. I registered. Okay. That's really yes. helpful. And then I wanted to ask what you thought about in terms of making um, two tweaks to my bill, one that for the city owned buildings, that it include um, the indoor illumination as well as to the exterior of the building. Not for the record, the, do you support that? 
I would, I think I, I would, we would support that. I mean, it's not something that I'm an expert on, you know, exterior versus interior lighting, yeah. but it, it seems to me that either, um, both actually yeah. a reduction I mean, if we have an opportunity helpful. to do both, why not? Right. right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Great. And then my second question, this is harder, uh, and, and don't feel pressure to go on the record uh, on this one, but what do you think about extending these requirements to city leased buildings? So in other words, my office is at 250 Broadway, um, city council uh, leases, uh, I don't know how many floors, four or five, New York state, leases a bunch of floors as well for their electeds. What do you think about including a clause about this in the city leased buildings in our contracts, the city's contracts? It seems to me it would be a good idea, again, because it were it it's it focuses on reducing yeah. light pollution. So okay. Great. without sacrificing anything. Yep. Yep. Same thing. I agree. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Gruber. Appreciate your um, participation in your nonprofit and, and taking the time to testify today. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you uh, uh, thank you, Steve. We really appreciate you being here today. And we thank you for, uh, you know, having submitted your you know, testimony and writing so we could get the full uh, benefit of your statement. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Moderator, or we're ready for the next witness. Next witness is Lauren Schnapp, who will be followed by Margaret Lee. Starting time. Hi, <clears throat> uh, this is Larry Schnapp. I'm an environmental, long-term environmental lawyer. Uh, I'm also an adjunct at New York Law School. I'm an emer emeritus board member of the Brownfield Partnership of New York and the Brownfield Coalition of, uh, of the Northeast. I'm going to be testifying about 2460. I have a couple of short comments. Um, before I start, I just want to let people know that I'm a bird lover too. And I had a series of talking parakeets. And the last one said, I live in New York and how am I doing? Um, <laughs> but um, going to uh, uh, 2460, um, I support the, the effort to um, enhance the enforcement um, authority of OER. I think the legislation is a little bit broad. Uh, because it could bring in uh, parties that may not have actually the ability to uh, implement these uh, SMPs. So I was just going to suggest that uh, our OER's regulations at 43.1408 and 43.1407, referring to transfer notice of completion documents and also institutional controls, they refer to transferees and assigns. And so I think that we, uh, instead of saying any or other or entities or other persons, I think if we limit the um, borrow from the OER regulations or for the parties that are responsible for enforcing these uh, uh, um, controls and site manager plans, if we use the language from the regulation, little quick little twi uh, tweet, I think it would work. So um, um, that's just um, my, my short comment. And uh, I'm glad to see the chair in his uh, position of where he should be uh, uh, as the head of the environmental uh, committee, as a fellow far, uh, geology major. Um, great, glad to see you back in, uh, in charge. I, 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 Larry, well, I, I, um, I don't know about being uh, uh, in, in charge, although I do have this gavel, which is nice. <clears throat> um, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, um, if you could please, um, uh, uh, I mean, and, and first of all, it, it's good to see you. It's been a long time. I was, you know, um, uh, you know, DEC for a number of years, being a you know deputy commissioner over there, and now I'm back doing this. And you know, uh, you know, happy to be back, and you know, and, and happy to see you. But certainly, uh, you know, uh, very glad that you came here to give us the benefit of uh, <clears throat> your views on uh, you know two four six zero. <clears throat> and um, if you can make sure that that gets to you know council staff so that we can give it as proper consideration. And uh, uh, Navi, this is uh, I'm, I'm talking to my um, legislative director now. Um, uh, uh, I want to make sure you 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 know you get a copy of uh, you know Larry's testimony. 
so that we can um, you know get right to work on it. And I, I appreciate that. <clears throat> um, also, um, uh, you know, appreciate your love of baseball. You got the Norman Rockwell painting, and I, I don't know what the panel's uh, autograph back here. You can't see it because of the the right. Wow. Yeah, Mickey yeah. signing his five inch, the signing the five inch uh, home run picture <clears throat> back at Daily News. Um, yeah, and um, um, uh, and 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 baseball trivia will put out to all of the you know, witnesses that if they can answer who Vic Wirtz is, they'll get extra credit. Okay, and that'll be a little you know little you know inside uh, um, um, inside baseball between. You know, uh, you know, between you and me, Larry, you know, we well know who Vic Wirtz is, but um, uh, like not that many people may. And you should go, everyone should look that person up on Google so that you'll be kind of you know, in with us. And so uh, uh, um, um, without any, uh, if there are no uh, 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 you know, questions for Larry, we'll go on to the next witness. And Larry, thank you very much for continuing to. Uh, you know, be part of the solution. We really appreciate your uh, presence here today. Thank you very much. I know I do. Thank you. Our next witness is Margaret Lee, who will be followed by Rachel Kimpton. Starting time. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to testify on behalf of birds. My name is Margaret Lee. As a bird lover from Lower Manhattan, District 1, I'm acutely aware of the many challenges and levels of suffering of New York City birds, those who live here as permanent residents and the thousands of migratory ones passing through to their seasonal destinations. I'm grateful to the council, especially council member Helen Rosenthal and Justin Brannan uh, for this act of compassion toward migratory birds in proposing Lights Out NYC to reduce or prevent their needless and horrific deaths from nighttime illuminated windows, please pass intros 265, 271, and 274. And after doing so, please continue to put your thoughts into other ways New York City can be a more compassionate city to all our wildlife inhabitants and seasonal visitors, perhaps inspiring other cities to follow our lead. Such future bills would include, but not be limited to, education to encourage compassion for non-human animals, provision of fresh water in garden settings, fountains with running water, regular supply of seed, cracked corn, removal and, and banning of bird deterrent spikes, specially planned bird-inspired areas that would be conducive to rest and nourishment, and that would also inspire human appreciation of wildlife for our feathered, our, our feathered neighbors and visitors. Uh, banning of deterrent, of detergents so often used as sidewalk cleansers that so horribly poison the birds. The ultimate goal would be a wildlife friendly New York City, a cruelty free New York City to inspire the entire world. Thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Margaret, for you know, uh, uh, all of your advocacy for the bills that are on the table today <clears throat> and for your you know, good ideas going forward. Please submit your um, uh, testimony in writing so that my um, legislative director <clears throat> and myself <clears throat> can take some of what you said and see if we can, you know, reduce that to legislation. So we appreciate you bringing forward, you know, uh, you know other good ideas in addition to your support of the bills on the, uh, uh, um, on the uh, 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 being heard today. So we uh, um, you know, appreciate that very much. And uh, if there are no more, if no one wishing to um, uh, um, ask questions of Margaret, we can uh, move to the next witness, Mr. Uh, moderator. But you know, thank you again, Margaret, for being here. We appreciate your terrific advocacy. Our next speaker is Rachel Kimpton, who will be followed by Andrew Farnsworth. <clears throat> Starting time. Good morning, all, and thank you for the opportunity to testify this morning. My name is Rachel Kimpton, and I am representing the Feminist Bird Club, 
We enthusiastically support passing introductions 265, 271, and 274 in order to limit nocturnal lighting in New York City. We believe that these laws will help provide a more just and healthy city for humans and wildlife. Feminist Bird Club is an international nonprofit with a goal to promote inclusivity in birding and conservation while fundraising for and engaging in social justice issues. We have over a dozen chapters of compassionate birders throughout the United States, Canada, and Europe with affiliated groups in Central and South America, but we started our original chapter here in New York City. I am grateful for all the wonderful and moving testimony regarding migratory birds shared by others this morning, which I will not repeat. Since nocturnal lighting is a known hazard to both human health and migratory bird species, we are especially passionate about promoting a solution to this deadly issue. Nearly every New Yorker has experienced the negative effects of light pollution in the city, but often these impacts disproportionately affect disadvantaged communities. According to a study on light pollution by Nady Ball et al, published in 2020, looking at this issue through an environmental justice lens, they found that black Americans, people of color, and people with low income are two times more likely to be exposed to excessive ambient light. These populations are already often forced to live in areas with high air pollution and within close proximity to toxic waste, compounding devastating health risks. Extending exposure to nocturnal light can cause sleep disorders directly linked to an increased chance of developing anxiety, depression, diabetes, gastrointestinal disorders, cardiac arrest, and different types of cancers. Low income and minority neighborhoods have also been hit harder by COVID-19, leaving families devastated by death and others disabled by long COVID and thus unable to work. Passing these introductions and shutting off the lights will bring immediate relief to those who need it the most. It is also an added bonus that our avian friends will benefit as well. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much, Rachel, uh, for your compelling testimony <clears throat> and um, all of your work with the um, uh, the um, organization is, is called the uh, 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 Feminist Bird Club. Did I get that right? Yes, that's correct. And uh, and and it's and it's and and it, it and it's reaching now like all over the world practically, right? Yes, excited to share that, yes. Wow, that, that, is, a, that is a nice thing to share. <clears throat> and um, if um, someone wanted to become associated and work with the Feminist Bird Club, um, how would they do that? I'll give you a little plug here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. They can look up our website and they can reach out to chapters that already exist. And if they don't have a chapter started where they're located, we welcome you to start your own. We want more people to be involved in birding, especially folks who are younger and are able to get involved sooner. Oh, great, great. I was, uh, I'm certainly happy to give you that plug and, uh, you know, uh, may your organization grow and flourish and continue to do all good works. And thank you very much for being here today. And please send us the uh, full text of your statement. You, you know, you cut it back a little because people had Said a lot of that and said, but we but but we want it in full so we can properly digest. It. So thank you very much for being here. Most appreciated. Thank you so much. Sure. And um, and uh, the next witness, Mr. Moderator. Next witness is Andrew Farnsworth, followed by Susan Harder. Starting time. Hello, uh, Chair Gennaro, Council Member Ro Council. Rosenthal and uh, members of the committee and all on the call, thank you for uh, giving me a little bit of a platform to speak. My name is Dr. Andrew Farnsworth. I'm a senior research associate at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Uh, I am first and foremost a birder, uh, second a New Yorker, and probably finally a scientist. I study bird migration and I have for uh, the last 30 years. And what I'll be talking to you about today um, is really the scientific perspective on this lights out issue. As you've heard from many of my colleagues and collaborators at New York City Audubon, Wild Bird Fund and American Bird Conservancy, light attracts and disorients birds at night. Just to frame that a little bit, um, on a good peak migration night across the United States, we're talking about 850 million birds aloft over the contiguous United States. Over New York City uh, itself, we're talking on a good night, a peak night in May or October of three to six million birds. So we're talking about large numbers of birds and the potential for trouble with those birds as a function of light is enormous. 
So we know from our work, uh, some of which has been talked about previously at the Tribute in Light in Manhattan, that we can see these effects of light uh, dramatically. When the lights are on, for example, at the Tribute in Light, birds are attracted in large numbers up to 100 times uh, greater than background level of migration. They circle, uh, they call a lot because they're disoriented. When the lights go off, we see the behaviors respond immediately and birds return to normal migratory behaviors. We also have studied uh, individual buildings. There's been some discussion about interior light today. Uh, we know from our work in Chicago that even having um, the amount of light from a particular bay of windows at McCormick Place could reduce uh, casualties of bird collisions by an enormous amount, talking about 60% reduction. So interior and exterior light are important. Um, we also know from a very broad perspective that New York isn't the only city involved, but New York is among the top 10 uh, in terms of exposure risk when it comes to exposing birds to light pollution at night when they're migrating. So we have an opportunity to lead, there are lots of birds, there's an enormous amount of illumination, and we can absolutely do the right thing. So what I'd like to advocate is that absolutely, um, intros uh, 265, 271, uh, 274, we fully support those. I'm uh, throwing behind uh, them the weight of the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and my own work. I'm happy to act as a resource uh, for the science behind our decision making and what we can provide. Happy to act as a sounding board as well. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to testify in support of these. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Farnsworth, for the uh, for the scientific heft and background that you you know give to these proceedings. We certainly appreciate your offer to be a, 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 a sounding board. Uh, if, if, if you do have your statement um, um, reduced to writing, we uh, certainly would welcome. Look like you were, you know, just kind of winging it there, pardon the pun. <clears throat> but um, we would like the benefit of your uh, full statement, you know, uh, uh, particularly based on your, you know, long history of, uh, uh, you know, scientific endeavor in this uh, in, uh, in this field, which we recognize and thank you for. And uh, um, with that said, uh, I recognize Councilman Rosenthal for questions for you. Uh, Councilman Rosenthal. Starting thank time. Thank you so much. Um, is it Dr. Farnsworth? OK, so Dr. Farnsworth, um, I don't know if you've you've already submitted your testimony, but I'd be, I, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to add to your testimony um, agreement that we should tweak um, the bill, my bill, uh, 274, so that it includes um, the interior lighting of city-owned buildings and so I'll ask that first, if you support that um, addition to my bill. Mm -hmm. I do support that. I don't want it to be at the cost, as we've all talked about, of, of um, you know, failing to control the exterior lighting. But I definitely, I definitely believe that including the interior yeah. is important, definitely. Yeah, I, I, I think if you, if you look at the language closely, it alludes to the inside of the building. It's explicit about the exterior. And what I'm wanting to know if you'd be going on the record to say, yes, we should make the interior of the building explicit as well. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. And then secondly, whether or not you would support our adding to the bill language that refers to city leased buildings that we uh, have the city add to their contract with city leased building buildings requiring the same thing. Mm -hmm. I would support that, absolutely, yes. Uh, I think it's, um, it's key because uh, again, the more light, uh, especially the more non-essential light that we can reduce, the better. Great, so could I ask you to, when you submit your testimony, to include those two aspects as well. And, um, you know, I'm seeing that Ms. Parkins is still on, you know, for you, for others who agree with that idea for edits to my 
bill, if you could please include that in your testimony, you can resubmit, you know, or if you've already submitted, you can submit an update to your testimony that clarifies those two um, additions, requesting those two additions. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your work. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Councilmember Rosenthal. And this is what hearings are all about. We get good people come forward and give us things that we didn't think of, or they have, you know, the proper um, expertise that can help us uh, shape your, you know, um, already good bill. And I, uh, uh, you know, thank you, Dr. Farnsworth, <clears throat> for you know being here today and for giving us the benefit of all your decades of um, expertise on this very important topic. And also for laughing at my Santa joke earlier, you know what I mean. And uh, you know, you know, you could go for the trifecta and tell me who Vic Wirtz is if you if you if you know who that is. I do know uh, who that is a baseball fan. He caught okay, Willie. Go ahead, Mays. tell us. He, so, caught, so, he, caught so. Willie, he caught Willie Mays fly ball, right? This is the. <laughs> I mean, uh, actually, he, he, Willie, Willie Mays caught his fly ball. Sorry. Correct, and that was the famous back to the plate catch in yeah. in what year? In what year? Fifty. Four, maybe I... 51 but close enough we have a winner here today and so um uh yeah so uh thank you for engaging us not only in your scientific um expertise but in some baseball and holiday fun so we appreciate that um uh please come again please come again and so uh uh, uh thank you again dr farnsworth and uh, uh with that um uh, um uh, uh, Mr. Moderator, now that we've got the whole Vic Wards thing squared away and Santa Claus and all is good, benefit, we'll, we'll, we'll call the next witness. Thank you. Okay, our next witness is Su <clears throat> Susan Harder, fo uh, followed by Rita McMinn. <clears throat> to, the Starting members, time. to the members of the committee and hello to my environmental colleagues today regarding night lighting 265-271-274. As the New York representative of the International Dark Sky Association, I am here in support of the measures to enact the sensible legislation to limit excessive and unnecessary night lighting and to protect the birds. Our organization helps educate municipal officials and the public on the ways and means to reduce the impacts of light pollution, namely glare, unshielded, excessive, and unnecessary night lighting. We, along with our partners, with the Illuminating Engineering Society, produced a set of five principles for responsible outdoor lighting, which could be a guide to continuing your legislative efforts to protect our nighttime environment for all creatures, great and small. These five principles are based in common sense and professional guidelines. One, all light should have a clear purpose. Before installing or replacing a fixture, determine if the light is needed for safety, consider how the use of the light will impact the area, including wildlife and for the environment. Two, light should be directed only where needed. Use shielding and careful aiming to target the direction of the light beam so that it points downward and does not spill beyond where it is needed. Three, light should be no brighter than necessary. Use the lowest light level required for professional standards. Four, light should be used only when it is useful. Use controls such as timers or motion detectors to ensure that light is available when it is needed, dimmed when possible, and turned off when not needed. And five, use warmer color lights. Limit the amount of shorter wavelength blue-violet light to the least amount. For example, use sources rated at 2200 Kelvin, which are better for night vision. Blue light waves are problematic for many reasons. One, night vision is impaired. The pupil contracts more in the presence of blue light, and this is all creatures. Blue light contributes to macular degeneration. Circadian rhythms are disrupted, disturbing sleep and lowering melatonin production, a tumor suppressant. With less blue, the light is warmer, more pleasant with less glare. And since blue light waves scatter more in the atmosphere, there is greater sky glow, obscuring the stars in the night sky. The International Dark Sky Association supports the measures under consideration today. And I will add that my partner and I own over 100 residential and commercial buildings, and we are entirely 
in favor of the current measures. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Susan, for your very compelling testimony that you brought out things that people had not yet brought out. <clears throat> and we certainly do appreciate that. And we thank you for working with the uh, um, International uh, uh, Dark Sky Association mm -hmm. uh, and um, for your position that as a building owner yourself, you're very much in favor of all of the measures in the um, uh, uh, of the you know three bills that you know deal with uh, um, that uh, deal with lighting. So we thank you very much mm -hmm. for for uh, for being here and um, and also for the uh, for the painting of Starry Night uh, uh, behind you that gives us um, additional um, <laughs> inspiration for what a, a dark sky can really you know, before us. So uh, thank you for that as well. And um, so um, uh, just a moderator before we, this is uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 um, just to have a little fun with uh, uh, Dr. Farnsworth. I did receive a text message from someone who um, heard me cite the year 1951. Dr. Farnsworth is right. It is 1954. That was the catch. So Somebody hearing somebody somebody in the hearing sent me that. Uh, so uh, I do stand corrected. You are the you know undisputed champion of that issue, uh, and um, uh, and with that with that record correction of, uh, of of when the catch happened, and you know having heard the good testimony of uh, Susan Harder, we're ready to proceed to the next witness. Okay, next up is Rita McMahon, who will be followed by Laura Leopardo, who was our last registered speaker. Starting time. Hello. I want to, I'm very thrilled to be with all of you people. This is a great gathering, and it's uh, hard to follow you all. But I am Rita McMahon, testifying today as the co-founder and director of the Wild Bird Fund, New York City's only wildlife rehabilitation center. Every spring and fall, compassionate New Yorkers bring us migrating birds that have collided with a building or window. These birds suffer from double concussions. First, they strike the building, then they fall to the pavement below. This spring, we admitted 232 window strike patients. And so far this fall, 900, more than 1,000 patients. Our 1,000 plus birds are only a tiny fraction of the actual number of window strike casualties in New York City each year. And our patients are the lucky ones who did not die immediately upon impact. But many of them are gravely injured. Now, only about half will be released so they can continue their journey. Most birds migrate at night. We have that established. Millions of birds pass through the skies above us each spring and autumn. Three to six million over New York one night, and they are drawn into the canyons of New York City at night by its bright lights. They come here to rest and feed. Some birds strike the buildings on the way in, some on the way out. We keep records of where each of our patients is found. I'd like to share some of our preliminary findings with the council. For all of New York City, three quarters of the bird strikes occur in Manhattan the most brightly lit borough. About twice as many of our Manhattan patients this year were found in downtown and midtown. The parts of town more brightly lit at night as compared to above 57th Street. Finally, <clears throat> a disproportionate number of our collision patients are juvenile birds. These are first time migrators who need to look for cues like light to guide them on their way. Birds have migrated down the Eastern seaboard for centuries. Today's collision victims are the consequence of the city we humans have built. We should do what we can to reduce their danger. Wild Bird Fund urges the city council to approve introduced bills 265, 271, 274, and 2460. Because by decreasing nighttime illumination, these bills should reduce the number of migratory bird casualties. We'll be very happy to have fewer patients. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Rita. I certainly appreciate your very compelling testimony <clears throat> where you break it down by part of Manhattan, outside Manhattan, and, you know, like a juvenile bird uh, um, um, element. And I am going to recognize Councilman Rosenthal for questions. But before I do, we have a, you have a very sympathetic uh, uh, audience with regard to what you do uh, in the Wild Bird Fund. <clears throat> and if there are people who are, who are, you know, on this Zoom or, or watching, you know, over the telecast uh, who want to give assistance or find out more about the Wild Bird Fund, um, how would they best do that? Probably going to our website. So, and that's wildbirdfund.org. And there's lots of information. We do our best to educate as well as repair the birds. Well, uh, well the, uh, uh, you know, thank you very much for that. I'm more than happy to try to do what I can to you know, get you, you know, more support for what you do. And so, uh, you know, thank you very much for that. I'll be looking into that website myself. So uh, thank you for that. And with that, I recognize Councilman Rosenthal for questions. Thank you Starting so time. much, Chair Gennaro. Um, heads up, uh, um, Rita McMahon will hold your feet to the fire for your offer just now to help the Wild Bird Fund. Um, the city council has been incredibly generous to the Wild Bird Fund, both in expense and capital funding, and it's the taxpayer money has been put to very good use. Um, so she will take you up on that offer. I can tell you that from personal experience. Um, and then, uh, Rita, thank you so much for testifying. And, you know, thank you so much for the work that you do, the passion you bring to the Wild Bird Fund. It, um, all of this is happening because of, uh, yes, everyone's ag ag advocacy here today, but you do this work day in, day out. Um, when I'm leaving the office at eight or nine o'clock, you're still there. When, uh, you know, I stop in the weekends, you're still there. Uh, um, you are tireless in your mission to, um, to the survival of birds. So, you know, thank you so much for that. And it's been an honor having my office next to yours. Um, I love coming in early and hearing the roosters uh, crow. Um, and... <laughs> Um, love being able to stop by and see the snowy owls that you are rescuing um, and, and the everyday birds. What you and your staff are able to do is extraordinary. Um, and I've had the honor and privilege to watch that over the past eight years. Um, and uh, I hope we can continue working together after the end of my term, but you know, I feel like this is the lasting, um, these three bills are your lasting legacy that uh, uh, Speaker Johnson has supported and council members Ben and I are lucky to be the proud sponsors of. So thank you for that. Really, I have to thank you and Justin Brannan and Corey Johnson. It's been very nice to have your support through this time. And it's also thanking all the New Yorkers who bring us the injured birds. There are thousands every year. We have 9,000 birds this year, but that means 8,000 individuals brought in those animals. Yeah. New Yorkers yeah. care. Yeah. They care a great deal. Rita, could I just ask uh, you, as I've asked some of the other people who's test who have testified this morning, if you are, and I just want to keep it short, if you're in support, of clarifying my bill so that it also includes uh, eliminating uh, indoor lighting in city owned buildings and also uh, to address the same issue in the contracts that the city has on city leased buildings. If you're in support of those two things, could you please add that to your testimony and submit it um, for the record, because your, your advocacy here is incredibly important. It's already noted 
and done. It will be done. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, thank you, Councilman Rosenthal. And, um, uh, and and thank you, Rita. It's not every day that I get to talk to a legend, but um, <laughs> um, I, 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 I have that privilege today. And uh, please hold my feet to the fire. Uh, my, uh, my, 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 uh, you know, uh, chief of staff and budget director is Henry Yam, Y-A-M. He's not a hard guy to find, nor am I. And, uh, you know, we, we, we look forward to your, um, request for funding in the next, um, um, in the next council budget cycle. And so, thank um, you. Uh, 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 um, you, you bet, Rita. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, oh, I, I see a thumbs up from uh, I see a thumbs up from <laughs> from Helen. And so, uh, uh, Mr. Moderator, do, do we, we have more witnesses? Right. Yes, we have one last uh, speaker registered for this hearing, uh, Laura Leopardo. Starting time. Hi, my name is Laura Leopardo, and I am testifying on behalf of voters for animal rights. Uh, thank you so much, Chairman Gennaro, for holding this important hearing. I'm asking that you pass intros 274, 265, and 271, the light pollution bills. One of the unfortunate things about going last is a lot of the things that um, I have to testify have already been stated. However, I actually am going to reiterate them because I'm going to read what I've prepared, but also I think it's important because some of the numbers that I'm stating and have been stated previously are quite astronomical. So given that, I'd like to start out by sharing how birds are important members of our ecosystem. They play a vital role in controlling insects and rodents, act as pollinators, and provide seed dispersal, all of which are tangible benefits to us. However, a recent study published by the journal titled Science found that since the 1970s, there has been a 29% loss in the total number of birds. So that's about 3 billion in North America alone. Uh, with the great emptying of the skies, there are now 3 billion fewer beaks to snap up insects, 3 billion fewer pairs of wings for moving nutrients, pollens, and seeds through the world. In addition, according to the Audubon Society, two thirds of our existing birds in North America are at, risk, um, are at risk of extinction due to climate change. That spells a lot of trouble for our important bird friends. Now let's add the additional facts of light pollution to the above equation. As it has been said, the New York City Audubon Society has stated that there's about, about 230,000 birds that die each year in New York City alone after colliding with glass buildings and with light pollution being a very significant factor in these collisions. Birds migrate at night, which has been stated, and are attracted to the artificial lights. The lights on tall buildings disorient them and confuse the navigation systems of the unlucky ones that have these buildings in their flight path. They circle the buildings repeatedly, frequently, and painstakingly strike transparent or reflective windows or die of exhaustion. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, this phenomenon has led to the death of an estimated 500 million to a billion birds annually just in the United States alone. In addition to saving the lives of countless birds, these bills would in turn reduce energy consumption and thus be a logical part of our city's sustainability strategy by reducing our carbon footprint. I do thank the council for recently passing intro 1482 in 2019, which requires bird safe glass and new construction. This was an important step towards improving our relationship. Time expired. Uh, 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 please continue. Uh, uh, please continue, Laura. You've waited to the last. You, you, you have the floor. Thank you. Just another minute. This was an important step towards improving our relationship to our environment, but these light protection bills will address the additional factor of lights and on all buildings, not newly built ones, and thereby add an important and much needed safety measure to the vulnerable birds. We are the guardians of earth and it is our job to make sure our birds remain a significant and important element of our ecosystem. Thank you again to the committee, to um, 
Council Member um, Rosenthal and Gennaro. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Laura, very much. I, I, I think your testimony was like the perfect capstone to the hearing. There were certain things that I think um, uh, certainly bared being, you know, repeated. And, uh, uh, and, and, and of course, we want the, the, the full text of your statement so that we can, uh, you know, give it its, 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 its uh, proper due. And so I, I really do appreciate that. Um, um, Mr. Moderator, um, at the risk of um, uh, you know, violating protocol, I did see that um, somebody asked to be recognized. I think it was I think it was Catherine Skopik. We don't ordinarily do this, but um, uh, uh, if, if if Catherine has something. Uh, to add, I'll give her a little latitude, and I will uh, recall her if she wishes to be recalled. Thank you, Chair Gennaro. I appreciate that. Uh, just very briefly, uh, just to kind of add something from Margaret Lisa, taking care of our animals. In the wintertime, you probably all know this being birders, but when it's below freezing, put fresh water out for the birds. But the thing I wanted to add is just as we have 1482 about the glass, that any laws that we have about the lights out should be enforced. Uh, as uh, Helen, Council Member Helen Rosenthal is working to get interior light reduced as well, possibly. Uh, we do have that those uh, rules that when you have the lighting system so that when a person walks into the room, the light goes out. When they leave, it goes on. Then when they leave, it goes out. And anecdotally, I've heard that a lot of our buildings, and someone else has mentioned this, that our lights are on that are vacant rooms. Uh, they don't even need to be there. So I believe there is some form of a rule that this kind of lighting system should be installed in all present and new buildings. And the last thing I would like to say is that our sister city, Paris, France, if you go back to 2015, Daphne, I forget her last name, was the elected official in Paris who got the city of lights to reduce their lights. So we might also want to take a look at what Paris has done. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Catherine. I, I appreciate that. I, I don't ordinarily do that, but <clears throat> um, I chose to recall you, but that's going to be it. I'm not going <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm to recall anybody else. And just some notes for staff. I, um, yeah, um, remember we want to get, um, we, we um, uh, Navi, we want to uh, get the full text of the uh, uh, Rebney uh, 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 testimony. We want to get the uh, details from, uh, you know, uh, Larry Schnaff about, um, uh, about about uh, 2460 and um, whatever else, like whatever other uh, notes I made to staff during the hearing, let's let let's start working on that. You know, today we don't have a lot of time to uh, you know get this all done, and we want to you know we want to get this um, uh, you know we want to get these bills passed. And we want to get them passed now, and so. Um, Let's uh, you know clean up all the loose ends. Have a look at whatever needs to be looked at, and uh, and uh, move forward. Uh, with that said, I'd like to uh, you know thank the moderator, uh, thank the uh, uh, staff of the committee, uh, my legislative director uh, Nabi Cower, and uh, most important, and the sergeants for running the hearing, making sure everything works. Um, they do a, 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 a great job doing that. Um, and last but certainly not least, all the people who, you know, gave of their uh, time to be with us today, give, to give us the benefit of, 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 uh, um, of their views to make these bills even better than they are. We certainly do, you know, we certainly do appreciate that and recognize that and recognize all the work that you do on behalf of whether it, you know, be birds or brownfield or, or, or anything that this, uh, you know, subject touched. Everyone works very hard in the vineyard. When they're not here uh, uh, testifying, we want to recognize all of your good work in all of your um, respective fields. And with that said, uh, this hearing is adjourned. Thank you all very much for participating.